uh, let's start from our entertainment industry. Now, I presume, like you understand, uh, you constantly, every day, you interact with companies in this industry and you understand that uh, this type of industry has a lot of different areas. And uh, if you look at, for example, sport events or concerts or movie cinemas or theaters, right? Uh, you understand that those businesses, they were affected the most during the pandemic because the majority of them, they were just closed down completely and their revenue stopped like 100%, like the companies went. And if the business, that entertainment company, which kind of was organizing concerts, they practically lost 100% of their revenue. And if they don't have enough cash to support themselves through that period, you can consider this company is going to into liquidation if not went through the liquidation already. So it's very difficult for those businesses. Now, if the company survived that area, or maybe they have diversification, they have some businesses which are digital, right? And uh, they manage their business digitally, digital profit covers whatever they had uh, profit from parks, for example, Disney. Uh, Disney has parks which completely closed, right? Entertainment parks. Also, they have cruise liners, which has to like be parked somewhere in ports and uh, they can, cannot produce any income. But then at, on another side, Disney producing a lot of content now. And uh, one thing, and also they even start selling their old movies, whatever they had already previously, like nobody's going to watch it, but because people now sitting at home and they already watched all new releases, now they go back and start watching the old new, new movies. So Disney uh, created much more subscribers during this period of time, same as Netflix, right? So they're making a lot of money. Now, uh, some companies like Netflix, I just mentioned, they benefited out of uh, this pandemic because they don't have these kind of ground businesses. And uh, their model of uh, business is subscription based. At least that's what I'm aware of in Australia. Maybe they have some kind of free to air uh, businesses as well as other companies, but majority of Netflix surprises, they're paying you for being a, like a for subscription and they don't see any advertisements at all. Now, other businesses, the way they deal, they show the movies for free, but then they constantly show their subscribers advertisement and they get paid for this advertisement. And during the last six months, what happened that a lot of businesses, they suffered. And as a result, of course, they reduced their advertisement budgets and they don't pay for, for advertisement. They kind of don't order advertisement. And of course the revenue for a lot of businesses who rely on just that model, they suffered a lot. And uh, the company which we're going to cover today, uh, they had both options. They have a subscription based uh, like uh, model of getting revenue and also they have free to air revenue. So where they get money, they show content for completely free, but then they get um, money from revenue from advertisers. And the more uh, people watch this content, free content, the, like the advertiser paying more money for this subscription. So you understand that. And another thing which is also have to be taken into consideration that uh, at the moment, it's quite difficult to predict what is going to happen in the future uh, from the revenue perspective, because the businesses like Disney, yes, they, they can probably predict what is going to happen on a subscription base because this business is not affected but they wouldn't know uh, what is going to happen with all these entertainment parks or kind of uh, cruise liners. Right? It's very difficult because they don't know if uh, the second wave of, of COVID-19 or COVID-20, whatever, is going to happen. And uh, it's again, everything will be in lockdown and their businesses will be like, I mean, uh, on a pause, right? Uh, businesses like concerts, businesses like uh, all the sport events, they're also on a pause, right? So we wouldn't know when the revenue is going to go back to the previous norms, or even if everything's going to be clear, is it going to be on that level again? Because a lot of people already, a lot of politicians, they're talking about social distancing as a norm, it's new norm, and 
most likely there would be certain restrictions maybe how many people can attend certain events or what kind of distance has to be between tables and restaurants or whatever right so quite possible that we'll see something like that and all these unknowns they may create uncertainties from the business review so if you consider or considered to buy companies which in that particular industry you have to think net several times before you're placing money there and you start thinking okay how particular situation is going to affect those businesses okay is the business model going to suffer or otherwise it's going to be improved okay so you have to consider in this before you allocate your money okay if you go to value line uh, i presume value line uh, will repeat whatever i just uh, mentioned and uh, when you see in value line, I think 54 companies in that industry, they divide. And again, I want to tell you that um, even though the company is placed in that particular industry, it doesn't mean that it's a whole business related to that industry, because you understand the bigger the company, the more it's kind of integrated with other industries. For example, Disney, right? So it's entertainment industry, but also they have, if we take another cruise liners industry, so they have business there as well, right? So because part of their business and then telecommunication. So if we look at at t so they have also entertainment industry, but it's more like, um, it's located in different industry, but part of their business is in, in entertainment as well. But if we'll take only companies which in value line universe, so we would see that Netflix and Disney, these two companies, they practically by capitalization uh, represent two thirds of the whole market. Huge. Uh, Disney is probably one of the biggest in the world company in the particular case. Uh, and uh, when I try to find it, this small square here, that's the discovery. Okay, so it's it's a tiny company compared to Disney or Netflix or other companies, right? It's only $10 billion in capitalization. Okay. Now, if you look uh, through this report and in the, in the end, you will see that value line, they write here down, we think Disney, Viacom, SBS, by the way, we looked at this company, I think in the end of the uh, last year or beginning of this year, right? We had a masterclass on Viacom, uh, MC Networks and Discovery. So the company which we're covering today, uh, I am one of the more uh, attractively valued equities for the long haul, okay? And um, of course, they advise same as I do, uh, apply due diligence yourself, right? And carefully review the company fundamentals and financial health before uh, committing funds, okay? But uh, at least we know that value line with their analysts and with their experience, they also see this specific company as a good uh, potential candidate for your investment. Now, the way I do, as you can see, uh, I do the screening process in value line. And the way I kind of found this specific company, so as you can see, I put entertainment industry. And uh, there were 57 companies here. And then I added only two parameters. One parameter was price union ratio, because it's, uh, this is ratio. And I like when I see it between 15 or even lower. So I put from four to 15. By the way, when I didn't put anything, it was 18 companies. So 18 companies only profitable right now. Okay, when uh, it's from zero to like unlimited, right? So only 18 companies out of 57, they're making profit right now. So after that, I put from four to 15 and the 10 companies only left. And then I added uh, the projection for the future growth. For me, it's important that uh, value line does this work for me and they already make certain projections uh, for different businesses and they analyze their reports. They listen to all their like earnings calls and they know that this company is planning to grow in the future. So, and I put it from five to whatever, okay? Like the five is the lowest uh, profit growth next for next year, like every year after year. So five year to three year projections uh, and only eight companies left. So can you imagine guys out of 57 companies, only eight companies left. So what I've done after that, I downloaded the data and uh, I put it in FinViz. The reason why I put it in FinViz because FinViz, in, uh, it's another analytical platform which allows us to see straight away uh, all information in one glance. Okay, and uh, you can see sometimes the database 
in uh, Finviz, it's uh, different than from value line. And that's why I might put eight companies here and only six come up. Okay, so in this particular case, all eight companies uh, present in the Finviz as well. And that's why I see some parameters, okay, which I want to pay attention to. And as you can see, price union ratio for discovery is 10. Then I can see that GTN, it has only seven. Uh, another company, MSGN, it's only three, uh, which is really, really low. Okay, so can you imagine price union ratio only three? And uh, NXCT 11, seven, like I mean, and all these companies. Now, two companies uh, have uh, ups and P ratio. One is current and another is future period, forward period. Now, when you see something like that, it usually tells us that the company is not making money based on um, Finvis. I don't want to go into details and review it. So what I do, I completely eliminate those companies and I don't uh, analyze them. So just save my personal time. But of course, guys, you probably can go and uh, uh, look at them in more details. Also, what I'd added here, that those companies have to be optionable and shortable because I like when I have an option to sell options, all right, and short the companies in order to play on the downturn. So then that's what I've done it, but all eight companies left there. Now, what I've done after that, I put it also in technical uh, graphs there and what I can see, for example, EVC, you can see it's already moved up quite a lot from $1.20 to $1.90. So it's like 60, 70% growth in a short period of time from October. And usually after the growth like that, uh, companies, they pull down back. So definitely not for current uh, review, uh, this company. And also you can see it's uh, not making money here. For probably last quarter or something like that, they had uh, negative earnings. Now, and also I don't like companies when they're too small. And you can see this is only $159 million by capitalization. So I prefer the bigger companies because the bigger the company, the more stable it is on the market. Right, and a uh, few companies are quite small. Okay. Uh, but definitely, what I would probably uh, recommend you to do is to review these four additional companies, three additional companies. It's GTN. We can see that uh, price union ratio seven and forward price union ratio seven point four. Then TGNA uh, P ratio is ten and forward P is seven. Okay, and we are comp. Okay, uh, PE ratio is close to seven and then it's uh, close to six. Now guys, especially for guys who are just new, as you can see uh, that P ratio, that's uh, current P ratio, that's what happens. The, uh, the ratio which represents the price of the stock with the earnings which are happening right now. Now forward P ratio, this column, shows us the current price with the future earnings, with the next tip. Okay, and we can see it smaller. The question for you guys, is it better for us when forward PE is lower or is it better for us when the lower PE is higher? What do you think? Can you put, uh, everyone can answer this question. I'm just wondering that uh, do you have full understanding of uh, these ratios because it is important, right? Uh, in, in current situation to assess the company, is it good to invest or not? So future is low is better, correct, Olga? Uh, low is better, is better, is better, is better. Mika didn't understand forward higher PE, uh, better than lower PE. Future high is better. Okay, now guys, I'll tell you that's future when higher is actually worse. It means that, uh, okay, I'll give you the example. Imagine that the company is making, uh, let's say the profit of $1 million right now. Okay, and the whole company you can buy for $10 million. So what the PE ratio for this specific company? So it's 10, we divide 10 million we, for 1 million, which is profit right now. So, and we get 10. Now, but the management is telling, look, we implemented certain changes within the company and next year we're going to make $2 million profit. So the current price is 10 million and the future profit forward profit is $2 million. So if we divide current price by future profit, we get five, P ratio will be five, forward P ratio is going to be five. So when we see that it's going to be low than 10, it means that the company is going to increase their earnings uh, during next 12 months. 
Okay, but if the company is telling us, oh, most likely next year we're going to make only five hundred thousand dollars or half a million. So what we do, we take ten million, which is price for this business right now, and we divide it by half a million, which is going to be profit in the next future, and we get twenty. So and we see P ratio forward P ratio is twenty, which is higher than the current P. It means that uh, the company is going to uh, reduce their earnings. Okay, you understand? It's always, always uh, uh, P ratio, forward P ratio, calc they calculate on the current price, but the only one parameter changes, it's the earnings prediction. Okay, guys, whoever wrote uh, the higher is better, can you please put uh, pluses or something like that if you understand that the lower the better. That's why when I see that P ratio for discovery here 10 and the forward P ratio only six, it gives me the idea that the earnings, they have to go high quite a lot during next year. They're going to recover nearly like 70, 80% up, okay, in this particular case. When we see similar type of 7.7 .7 here, 7.4 here, yes, there is a slight growth, but very small growth, okay? And uh, here we see nice growth for NXCST, okay? And uh, here growth and here practically flat vehicle. Okay. This is how we identify the company discovery, and then we're going to uh, look already precisely.